Okay. Hello there, this is Kendo Nagasaki, Peter Thornley, the man behind the mask, and I am watching Cheap Shot Entertainment this afternoon and, and this morning and tonight. Hope you all join me. Bye! Promotional consideration paid for by the following. <laughs> Good day to you wrestling fans, I am your host Luke and you are the Cheap Shot Nation, this is Cheap Shot Entertainment and these are retro reviews, retro spelt with a W-R because it's wrestling. Anyway, um, right so we're moving on, July the 11th 2004 was the day that WWE Vengeance came into town to Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, it is a Raw brand exclusive. Uh, there was, indeed, uh, 7,000 people crammed into the building, and it was a Raw brand exclusive. Um, it is the Hartford Civic Center where they set up this pay-per-view. And it is, of course, on demand on the network. I'm sure you can go to well-known swap shops and get it on DVD if you prefer. And uh, the arena itself appears in, appears in three different games, and that is SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, Day of Reckoning 2, and WrestleMania 21. Um... And uh, just before we get into the main part of the pay-per-view, if you're watching this on YouTube or watching, listening on YouTube, you know what to do. And if you're joining us on the podcasting channel, Quick Shot Reviews, then please drop a like on there and follow us there. We've also got plenty of movie reviews going off there too. Um, so uh, yeah, all fun and games. Just before we get going into the main part of the pay-per-view, the Sunday Night Heat results are Tyson Tomko, and he defeated Val Venus on the pre-show, because Sunday Night Heat was basically the pre-show at this point in time. So um, I did say I was going to start watching those uh, those shows, or at least the match, <laughs> and give you a, a decent rundown, but uh, yeah, it's a pre-show. Uh, so... Yeah, we we get two hour pre-shows now, and there's no matches on it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> especially WrestleMania and coming up SummerSlam, we're gonna have two nights of seven hours of wrestling. It's like, whoa, hold on a second. I like wrestling. I don't like it quite that much. Um, that's like a quarter of my day, over a quarter of my day, over half actually, um, of two days. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a nice quarter. Go back, go back, go back. Right. We'll move on into the main part of the pay-per-view. Let's get into the action, shall we? We start the pay-per-view. We start Vengeance 2004 with an absolute catch-is-catch catch kind of classic, as JR would say. Uh, by the way, um... Obviously, we've most likely all heard the news that JR is uh, in hospital at the time of recording this, so uh, sending love, all the love to JR, big influence on me and my character in wrestling um, with regard to like uh, ring announcing and stuff. Um, anyway, yeah, we get in to the first match. It is a tag team match scheduled for 1-4. And it is Rhino and Tajiri um, versus Garrison Kane and Jonathan Coachman. Now, Jonathan Coachman has uh, had a bit of a rivalry with Tajiri. Um, they've gone back and forth. Don't know why they thought it was a good idea to have Coachman as a, an on screen wrestling talent rather than a, an announcer, which he's so much better at. But to be fair to him, he's pretty athletic and he can. 
do what uh, some people can't and that is sell <laughs> and I think that's probably why they've done it but yeah I mean it's a, uh, it's an okay match so basically the challenge was Jonathan Coachman goes and gets a partner and Tajiri goes and gets a partner so <coughs> Coachman comes out with Jairus and Cade they don't know who his partner is uh, with regard to Tajiri so Tajiri comes out and then Rhino's music hits Oh yeah, <laughs> great music. Anyway, so uh, yeah, a bit of backing and forth in here. Uh, Rhino starts with Garrison Cade. Garrison Cade gets annoyed, slaps Rhino. That is pretty much, uh, uh, well, it's not even pretty much. It is a no-no. <laughs> uh, so Rhino fires up. Um, it would eventually lead to uh, Tajiri giving Coachman the green mist and uh, Garrison K getting speared by Rhino and uh, that is uh, that is the finish uh, a goal uh, to Garrison K and win 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 ha <laughs> um, yeah it's not a bad opener um, it did what it needed to do had a bit of a story behind it which is always good and uh, yeah, let me go down the middle with this one. Three cheap shots out of five for this one. Um, we then get uh, Batista versus Chris Jericho. Batista on the up and up um, with this one because he has just come in, he's obviously joined the evolution and he's got Ric Flair. He's got Triple H teaching him how to do things, which is just, you know, a massive, massive rub of the green, really, isn't it? Um, and, uh, yeah, this match is decent, as you can expect. Jericho the Wiley veteran, I suppose you would say now, unrecognisable now to what he was back in 2004, and his ring gear was always really shiny and that's pretty cool because I love Jericho's ring gear in 2024 and going forward uh, just really really cool bright colours and uh, yeah different to everybody else who was wearing red and black black and red black and blue you know what I mean it was just completely different it was flamboyant without being over the top Batista, um, massive guy, obviously. If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, you know who Batista is. And, uh, yeah, contrast of two styles here, you know. Uh, Jericho is not going to be overpowering Batista, but Batista can move. Batista can move really well. And a couple of cutoffs here from Batista, both involving versions of the spine buster you don't often see two different versions of the spine buster one is just your sort of rock type spine buster is the way i could describe it where he drops to his knees and the other one just puts his hand on his chest after picking him up and just slams him down bit of a sort of choke slam type maneuver but yeah really cool and uh, i think i probably want to uh, implement that into my move set at some point uh, in my training so um, yeah you almost forget about these little moves these days don't you where a super kick is a transition anyway um, yeah again really good match um, didn't expect anything decent from these two you can tell Batista is a little bit green here but uh, Jericho carries him through uh, that being said, Batista doesn't actually need carry, uh, just need, needs pointers as he goes through. But his character was, I'm big, I'm angry, I'm going to beat you up. And that's pretty much all you need to know about Batista. Like I say, Jericho is a bit more flamboyant. There's lots of, uh, there was a step up in Siguri that he did, which looked really nice. And, uh, yeah. 
The match would finish with Batista's patented sit-out powerbomb. And I always found this really impressive. Because what he would do then is roll backwards. Bearing in mind he's the size of a house. And then go for the pin. Um, so, yeah, Batista bomb for the finish. Let me give this match two and a half cheap shots out of five. And Tilly the dog has joined me. And she agrees, don't you Tilly? Right, we move on to the next match. Moving on to the next match now, but before we do that, we go into the back with Evolution and Triple H, who is talking to Eugene. Uh, we do see a little scene of Chris Benoit talking to Eugene um, with Triple H just peering around the corner. I miss these kind of segments. They are fun and they do make the pay-per-view move on bit like a film. Now, um, yeah, they're talking to Eugene in the back. Um, they have a match. Eugene has a match with Ric Flair going for the tag team championships. And, um, yeah, Triple H says, you know what? Chris Benoit's a liar. He punched you in the face. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be associated with people like that, do you? And Eugene's obviously very confused. Triple H says, we've got a present for you. And then Ric Flair walks in. Like, come on, we've got to get ready. He's like, go and get the, go and get the present. And Ric Flair's like, I don't want to do it. And then he comes back in with a Ric Flair robe. Yes, come on, right? Who wouldn't want to wear one of those things? They're classic. Um, so, yeah, Ric Flair reluctantly gives Eugene... I love this storyline, by the way. Uh, don't love the... I mean, I love the character of Eugene. I don't love... The character of Eugene, if you like. Um, it's a really weird situation, but... Yeah, Ric Flair gives Eugene one of his uh, robes, and then they head out to the ring. Uh, La Resistance make their their way to the ring, uh, they grab the mic and start singing O Canada in French. Uh, Ric Flair's music hits, he comes out doing strutting. Eugene comes straight back out, right back out with him uh, and as Ric Flair turns to do his spin he sees Eugene doing the same thing and his, his reaction is just priceless um, so they make their way down to the ring Eugene obviously doing his happy wavy thing uh, it's Eugene and Savon Ronnier who start I believe uh, Eugene hitting all of Ric Flair's moves uh, Robert Conway comes in, uh, hits all of Ric Flair's moves as well. <clears throat> there would be an eventual cut-off uh, where Eugene would get beaten down a little bit. He would reach out for the tag from Ric Flair. Ric Flair would oblige and then come in and try and out Ric Flair Eugene. <laughs> I mean, come on, that, that alone. And there was some really good wrestling in here as well, some classic wrestling. Um, for what it was and uh, yeah Ric Flair starts taking taking out La Resistance and eventually they get a cut off as well and start beating down on Ric Flair to the point that we never see Eugene tag back in again um, so Ric Flair is getting beaten down uh, referee's attention is on Sylvain Renier uh, and uh, Rob Conway comes in and pulls uh, Eugene off the apron, throws him into the steps and uh, gets back in and starts beating up Ric Flair again. Eugene's getting angry now. It's like, oh, you've done that to me, I'm going to get angry. So he gets in, hits a stunner, hits the rock bottom, starts beating people up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just really cool that uh, Eugene, the character, can just pick up any move and it's pretty much like your... It's a satire on your character in a video game, but he's also playing someone with special needs. So, like I say, it's it's like a, a an in between, and it's an over the top special needs as well. So, uh, yeah, Eugene does eventually get disqualified because the referee's trying to stop him from beating up La Resistance in the corner. Eugene pushes away the referee, and uh, yeah, Ric Flair 
Eugene get disqualified, Silver Ronnier, Robert Conway retain the championships, La Resistance still World Tag Team Champions. What we get after that is another stunner and another rock bottom and a people's elbow with a strut in between whilst then Eugene picks up Ric Flair, reluctantly gives him a hug, Ric Flair does, and uh, they head to the back. I love this match. I'm not going to lie, this is the kind of match that I'll probably end up putting on um, just because I want people to be entertained by what I do. And um, yeah, like I say, I loved it. Um, but it was more about the story being told and that's what I really loved. So I'm going to give this one three and a half cheap shots out of five. It is a shame that Eugene and Ric Flair didn't pick up the championships here. I would have liked to have seen what they could do with those championships. The classic hard couple. But they already had um, Eugene and William Regal as well. So I guess they didn't want to overdo it. But yeah, um, that's that. <coughs> we move on to the next match. So we move on now to a no disqualification match between Matt Hardy and Kane. The story here is that Kane has coaxed Lita into sleeping with him. And <laughs> some casual, yep. And um, yeah, this is the storylines in 2004. And um, basically, uh, Lita admitted that she was pregnant. She did this before Kane revealed that they'd slept together and apparently the baby is Kane's. So obviously this caused a bit of friction between Matt Hardy and Lita, who were a real couple at the time. And uh, yeah, they used that in the storyline. So it comes down to the no disqualification match where Matt Hardy is fighting for his own... Um, salvation and, and that of uh, Lita. So he's still a bit uh, salty towards Lita, of course, not knowing whether the baby is his or not. So uh, Lita is down at ringside, um, very, well, not very torn, obviously, <laughs> between Matt Hardy and Kane. But um, yeah, basically, um, it's the standard no disqualification match. It, it has no rules. So um, there's steel stairs being used, chairs. At one point, Matt Hardy goes over the announce desk. Um, Lita gets involved, and that ultimately would lead to the finish here with Matt Hardy catching Kane out and... Uh, finishing him off and getting the victory, um, which is a very surprise victory uh, in terms of stature. I mean, Kane's huge. Uh, Matt Hardy is a former cruiserweight champion. So, yeah, it's very, um, very surprising. But... Um, And, uh, yeah, so Matt Hardy would actually get the victory here and uh, move on. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give this a, ooh, yeah, it's a pretty standard match. Um, I'm going to give it a three out of five, three cheap shots out of five. Lita does get involved for the finish, which just makes sense because obviously she wants to uh, protect Matt, her boyfriend. Uh, possibly the father of her child but uh, ultimately uh, Matt does fall out with her over this after the one two three and the finish Matt Hardy leaves very quickly and uh, the um, Lita goes chasing after him and says it could be yours <laughs> and Matt's like just leave me alone and it's like good for him good for him but uh, yeah um, yeah three cheap shots out of five for this one Short, sharp, does what it needs to do. It was sort of like a secondary, third, tertiary storyline at the time. So, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's just okay. So, um, we move on.
to the next match, which is for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, the Intercontinental Champion at this point was Randy Orton. And uh, he was running roughshod over Raw at the time. And any legends that were coming through, of course, because he was indeed the legend killer. So I'm, I'm doing this whilst watching the results of the British election. <laughs> and the... Uh, new prime minister i think has just shaken the hands with elmo um i that's just i just cracked me up um anyway back to the wrestling um <laughs> so uh yes the intercontinental championship match now i was watching this whilst on my exercise bike which i do for half an hour every morning and um yeah, the match went as long as I was on my exercise bike. So this is a good 30-minute match. And it's a very good 30-minute match um, between two future heavyweight champions. Obviously, one of them not waiting very long until they get that, that honour. The other one waiting ever so slightly longer. But, uh, yeah, two very... Young, up-and-comers, uh, come through the ranks. Randy Orton coming in quite a bit later than Edge. Uh, Edge having been around for a fair while through the Attitude Era. Randy Orton coming in at the start of the Ruthless Aggression Era, along with um, people like Brock Lesnar and Shelton Benjamin. And John Cena. I mean, that was that was the class of 2002. Um, but this match, wow. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of high flying, hard hitting action here. It's just pure wrestling. And I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. The fact that these guys could go half an hour just doing that is amazing. And, um, yeah, it's a really, really good match. And it's definitely the highlight of the night. Well, there you go. Anyway, um, yeah, really good match. If you go back and watch one match from this pay-per-view, it would definitely be this one. Um, so I'm going to give this one. I mean, it's just, it's a perfect match because... Everything they did was fairly basic, but it was exciting. It was what it needed to do. Uh, and obviously neither of them gassed because they're very well conditioned. So I'm going to give this like the full amount of cheap shots that I can give it. And five cheap shots out of five. Uh, it would be Edge that comes out with the victory here. Um, with, a, with a roll up, in fact. Um, I believe no, it wasn't. It was a spear. It was a spear. Uh, Randy Orton running into the corner, missing, and uh, yeah, getting hitch hit by the spear. Sorry, I'm getting my matches mixed up here. Uh, Edge hits the spear, gets the victory, becomes the new Intercontinental Champion uh, over Randy Orton, who held the title for a long, long time. And uh, yeah. Really good match. Like I said, I'm going to give it the full amount. Five cheap shots out of five on this one. And then we move on to the next match, which is uh, the women's number one contendership match. So they didn't even have a women's championship on this one. It was just for the number one contendership here. Um, and uh, Victoria gets the victory over Molly Holly. Sadly, around this time, the women were not getting um, the rub of the green that they deserved. These two women in particular were very, very good. Molly Holly and Victoria, both very established women's wrestlers. And they were not getting the rub of the green in favour of, of women that had come through. Uh, that, I suppose, just in some people's opinions, looked nicer. Um, 
which is sad and to see how far women's wrestling has come along since then is phenomenal um and i say this every single month it's a real shame that these ladies went on after the match of the night because the match itself wasn't actually bad it's just that everyone was so hyped up from the previous match that they'd almost forgotten that this match was going to exist uh, and um yeah it was it was decent it was a decent match um victoria comes out with the victory over molly holly who just had a head shaved um previously at wrestlemania uh by victoria in fact so this had a bit of uh history history it's <laughs> history behind it so uh yeah um it was okay i'm gonna give it two cheap shots out of five and uh we're then going to move on to the main event, which is Chris Benoit defending his championship against Triple H once again in some kind of iteration. Um, so um, this match, I mean, should I say I'm getting bored of it now uh, because we've seen it like three times? Uh, realistically this is the first time i think on a pay-per-view since benoit picked up the championship that he's had a one-on-one -on -one match with triple h though um i will say that so um yeah yeah <laughs> i mean you can't can't really go wrong with these guys it's just that it's been done and um you know he, he kind of got that feeling the, the added thing here was eugene um again playing into the story of the main event which i think is is crazy as much as i i love hate eugene <laughs> at the time uh, and and now just watching it i think it's great but also feel bad for thinking it's great that um yeah it's um yeah it's just a main event <laughs> i mean chris benoit does pick up the victory eventually and this one is a roll-up which i was very surprised about again there's not much action but they didn't manage to keep my attention as much as edge and randy orton did and i guess that's a sign of um triple h being in the position that he was he was just sort of getting championship matches and uh, chris benoit sort of i mean he, he did have a decent run um and he went up against quite a few big names but there was no real, nothing new about his run until SummerSlam, which is coming up next uh, in August, of course. And um, and uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just a match. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just a match. So I'm gonna give this one three cheap shots out of five um for the hokey finish it wasn't really a definitive finish it was two low blows and eugene teasing a chair shot um whilst he was there and uh yeah it was kind of yeah just that <laughs> it was just kind of so um yeah, that is Vengeance 2004. Uh, a fairly decent pay-per-view. Obviously, if I was going to say which one was better at this point between SmackDown and Raw, I'd say SmackDown had the better product. But in terms of pay-per-views, between Great American Bash and Vengeance, 
vengeance is the winner all the way and uh, there's a couple of really big reasons if you've listened to my podcast on great american bash then yeah it is great american bashing and it shouldn't you know, i'm like I say i'm recording this just after the 4th of july so um yeah um but there you go that's that we move on to our next pay-per-view which happened to be SummerSlam and uh, some real big matches in that one so we fly all the way to Canada for this one and uh, Ontario in fact where we go to the Air Canada Centre for SummerSlam and uh, obviously a much bigger crowd and all that kind of stuff going to have bigger matches and there's a couple of matches on Sunday Night Heat so I think this is where I might start um, yeah this is where I might just start watching Heat before the uh, pay-per-view so I can give a informed review on the uh, whole pay-per-view including the pre-show and with that i'd say thank you very much for listening cheap shot fans and cheap shot nation wrestling fans and i will leave you there go out and support independent wrestling get yourself a ticket to a local show because um even though i do the reviews of the wwe shows in the past um you know, independent wrestling needs your support. And, um, you know, we wouldn't be in the position we are in this country at the moment, in Britain, having so much choice of what to go and watch if it wasn't for people's backbreaking work, sometimes literally trying to get British wrestling on the map again. And on the map, it definitely is. So yeah treat yourself go out and watch a wrestling show this weekend the summer is full of them some of them free some of them not i'm on a free um fun day show uh this weekend for example and uh two more next week so yeah there's plenty plenty of things out there and with that i'm gonna say goodbye thank you very much for listening Goodbye, Cheap Shot Nation. I will see you at SummerSlam. Hiya!